Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm JP Hampton. This is my outdoor DIY channel where everything is outdoor related, even my DIYs. So uh, what we're looking at today is we just bought a new trailer. And this is a 2021 No Boundaries uh, Nobo 19.3. Uh, and so we're super excited about it. We finally outgrew our old trailer, even though we had been who knows how many miles and halfway across the country in it. And uh, so it was time for an upgrade. So we found one with some bunks. We found one uh, that basically fit all of our needs. So I'm gonna walk you through what I found useful uh, as somebody that plans on spending a great amount of time in this trailer. And also a few things that they don't show you at the dealership, uh, unless you know to ask those specific questions. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. So I just wanna start off by saying that this is the no boundaries model. So it's meant to go off road a little bit, uh, a lot of boondocking and things like that. Uh, but first things first, single propane tank single 12 volt battery uh, not a lot of amp hours there so i will be upgrading both of these in the future dual tanks dual uh six volt agm batteries up here and uh while it's not necessary i went ahead and put this on this goes to my trailer valet if you would like to see how that works just put it in the comments and i will give you a demonstration but while i am pretty good backing up a trailer i've got about 12 13 feet from that wall to this fence and a 20 foot gate to back this thing in sideways so it's going to be perfectly parallel when it comes in and uh, it's just easier if i've got something to help me along so it does have a little leash attachment point i think that's what that is here um electronic jack and it also has a little emergency handle that can go in here um so simple up down uh got an led light no lights down here so uh this area gets kind of dark at night so that is something to consider maybe sticking uh, a battery powered light on the back of here, or if you felt like drilling a hole, I wouldn't, um, but you could mount another light right here. So I think that's something they should have added. Instead, the light's up there on the top of the nose cone above the window, and uh, makes it kind of difficult to see when you're working on any of these things at night. Still, plenty of room on the tongue. Uh, I might have to make some modifications to get my batteries to fit, because six volt batteries are a little bit taller, and I am right up against that front cap. So I haven't figured that one out yet, but when I do, it'll be in a video. So pay attention, it'll probably be up here somewhere. Also very important, got a battery disconnect here and there's a thermal overload switch that if ever you're hooked into anything and nothing is working from your batteries, check that, see if it's popped out and you can just pop it back in. All right, while we are focused on the front, let's go ahead, this is a, uh, I don't know what type of glass it is, um, but it is glass. Uh, your blinds are back there, your bed's back there. So make sure you pull the blinds down before you fold your bed up, because this has a Murphy bed. And uh, if you fold your bed up, everybody will see what's back there. So anyway, uh, again, LED light strip right up there at the top. And uh, let's continue our walk around. If you're like me, your storage compartment might look something like this. You can see I've already got it packed up, but I've got my trash cans up here. I actually have a Blackstone griddle here, a table, uh, four chairs, my trash cans, brooms, a uh, little quick connect extra so that I can move my griddle around. This does come with a bush kitchen, but uh, I don't always plan on cooking on the side of my trailer because that can get kind of messy sometimes. But you can see all aluminum frame all the way across, very clean. This actually goes all the way through, even though you can't see through it. Ugh. So you can see all the way through that other side. I don't know if you can hear me or even see me, but here it is. So I went ahead and opened up the other side. You can see all the way through now. That's actually my uh, solar inverter, but I've got some games. I've got a couple uh, tables, uh, fold up tables. I've got some clotheslines uh, or a drying rack back there. Uh, all of my dirty stuff, toolkit and all that stuff. So there's plenty of room and I could even move this around even more to where I could utilize some more of this space. So here we are continuing our trip around the outside. Feel free to skip to the inside if this isn't what you're looking for. Uh, this is the bush kitchen attachment. So it's got a little table that attaches here. Uh, the bush kitchen goes here. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, plug in here, cable outlet. So if you do put your cable right here, you can set your TV on it and watch it. Uh, it's got a little spray port, a uh, quick, easy disconnect right tandem axle six lug uh off-road tires looks pretty legit so we will try that out before too long uh, it's got a quick disconnect underneath 
right underneath here for the propane. And uh, like I said, I went ahead and picked up an extra 12 foot uh, line so that I can move that in any direction. I can put it to the back. I can move it mostly to the front. Makes it nice and easy to get your griddle where you really want it. So there's that quick disconnect right there, out of focus. There it is, back in focus. Uh, that's where we connect our line for our bush kitchen. All right, so this is the access door outside. This leads to that bunk bed. You can see here, this folds up and locks into place. There's a little latch right here, and you've got plenty of storage. So if I had extra chairs, ice chests, I can get a lot of things in here that while I'm traveling, pull the bed up, and usually the, the way that I've packed mine, it's the first things that would be out of the trailer anyway. So even if we're just staying for a quick overnight stay, I can pull all my stuff out and uh, access it without having to unload the cargo area up front. And because I said I would show it to you, this is the bush kitchen. So this is your bracket, okay? You can see it's got like a little C-channel deal right here. It just hangs on that. There you go, make sure you get it in place. And then it's got little rubber feet here that rest up against the trailer. On the earlier models of these, uh, these hung down too low. They have since fixed that, and it looks like there's plenty of space now for this. All right, so whenever you unbox your uh, bush kitchen, it's gonna come with these brackets. Those brackets go on the bottom. Now they give you screws to put those brackets on, but I used the rubber feet. And that way I can still set this on a table but it slides in right here on both sides. It is a little heavy. You can take the griddle off, uh, the griddle top off if that's what you want to do. Right, then it's got these little latch pins right here that go into a couple of holes to hold it in place. You can see it's not very deep. It looks like it's about as wide as my Blackstone 17 inch, but it's not as big this way. Um, I don't like splattering on my trailer, so this probably will come off and go on a table somewhere. Um, it is, however, pretty convenient for holding it up out of the way. And this is actually the coolest part of this because this is my shelf and it sits right there. So in the future, I might actually just completely forego putting this on the side of the trailer and just get a couple of these shelves um, for keeping drinks and things like that. This, is usually where I keep my ice chest, so it just makes sense that I could have disposable uh, cups, utensils, uh, paper plates, and things like that. So we are now on the roof, and my neighbors probably think I'm a freak. So here's the skylight that's above the bathroom. Roof rack. So it's got a nice roof rack here for you to attach some things to. It came with a kayak carrier, but let's be honest, nobody's going to stick a kayak on the roof of this. I'm 10 feet up in the air. Adding the kayak puts me easy. Uh, two to three feet extra, and I just don't want to take that going down the road. Sorry about the bird. I got a nest right here. That's how high I am. So this is the Coleman Mach-Q 13.5 thousand BTU unit. Uh, it's the quiet ductless AC system. So they do make a 15,000 BTU ducted system. I haven't seen them in any of these units, but you might be able to order that from the factory. So that's something to ask about. It's got the uh, antenna for the TV and everything here. It does say that it is Wi-Fi booster ready. So check with your dealer to see if that is something that you could do. That might be something that I uh, plan on upgrading in the future. As we move around, you can see the 110 uh, watt solar panel that was installed at the factory. So this is the Go Power unit. Um, they say that if you get the Go Power uh, solar panels with the lithium ion batteries, that you get a 10 year warranty. The batteries, however, are about $1,100 a piece. So till then, I'm gonna stick with this. It should do an amazing job. My last unit, or uh, my last trailer, I used a 40 watt Zamp solar system, uh, one of their suitcase systems, and it did a really good job at keeping us off the grid for about eight or nine days. So here we are back on the ground. You can see we've got our spare tire carrier here. It is attached to a four inch tubular bumper. Um, it is a thin walled tube. I would not hang an additional bike rack off here without supporting it further or attaching it to the frame somehow. They do make struts. They make a bunch of different things that you can do there. Uh, but it does hold your sewer and your right nasty tubes and all that stuff that holds those hoses there for you. Um, I've got two 10 foot hoses in mine um, and they fit no problem. So anyway, uh, you've got this ladder rack here. It holds 250 pounds. You could attach something to it. It's really solid. I'm right at like the 225 pound mark. 
and it doesn't even act like it wants to flex with me. The roof is uh, 500 pounds that it supports and so you do have those racks and I plan on maybe putting a basket up there uh, for storing like an additional awning, uh, maybe some additional chairs or something like that. Not too much because you still have to get it up from the ground to the roof. So don't get too ambitious, remember that. So along with you guys and the birds that are living right up there on my roof, uh, we can see here that this is wired. It is pre-wired for the Furion backup camera, which I've actually purchased and I will be doing a video and you'll see it up here whenever I get that done. But you can see it's pretty much plug and play. It goes in there, pairs with the, uh, the truck. I bought mine on Amazon. You can buy from your local dealer. However, they were about $300 more expensive than what I got it for on Amazon. So sorry, little guy. This time I had to go with my pocketbook after spending all this money on the trailer. So and a quick look down the side we can see here this is where our plugins at that's where our cable uh, satellite and everything goes we do have a black water uh, flush system let's see right there um, i've got my heater vents i've got my uh, refrigerator opening right after that uh, there's a hood vent up on the roof or uh, up on the side actually just a little bit higher and then the water heater and everything else let me show you one more thing with the water heater this is one of the things that I asked about just simply because I've helped so many people get their water heaters running in campgrounds and uh, this one has an electrical heating element. You can't really see it. I will show that to you but it's got two reset buttons here so these are just thermal overload switches. If for some reason your water heater isn't working and everything else is you want to check these first. Maybe your water heater was empty and you turned it on it overheated the element and it kicks these off to prevent further damage. Um, you've got your overflow, your pressure relief valve here. You've got an anode rod. Let me get you down there so you can see it. All right, here we go. So here's your igniter. Here's your anode rod. This needs to be placed probably once a year. This is your little electrical unit. So this is what heats the water whenever you're hooked up to shore power. So it actually saves you a little bit on propane. Um, there's a switch down here on and off. You can flip that. If you are hooked up to shore power and it's not heating, consider coming out here and checking to make sure that that switch is flipped. This was something that I had to ask about. It was not included in my uh, PDI. Maybe it is in some places. Maybe they assumed that this was my second trailer and I knew what I was doing. So anyway, whatever it is, whatever the case, make sure that you ask about it and make sure that you go out and inspect your own. This is how I run my water regulator. They make different types, but this one just regulates the water to a certain uh, specific PSI. And that's where you fill up your freshwater tank. I don't know if you can see that little blue thing right there hanging down. That's your freshwater drain. That's where you drain your freshwater tank at the end of a trip. These are your low point drains. Um, they're right here. So this is where you get all the water out of your system for an extended storage. Um, you can see that they do have little uh, quarter turn valves on it. So it might be pretty easy if you wanted because this one doesn't come with an outdoor shower. But it might be pretty easy to run that to like a faucet diverter and uh, maybe put it on a stand and have yourself an outdoor shower that you know pops up on the back side of your trailer something to consider maybe something to build so you've already seen the door open but i'm going to go ahead and show you how to get these stairs down you want to make sure that the door is open all the way right and you pull this little blue handle you can see here you've got these things right here this helps you adjust these legs to give it the you know make sure everything is level and supported and this makes these extensions come in and out. You want to make sure that right here is perfectly flat up against that threshold. Otherwise, your door won't shut properly. All right, I hope this is a good view for you. I uh, kind of waited for the sun to go down for this one. Um, but you can see here that it's got a porch light. And on this model here, it's got an awning LED that is not attached to the roller at the end of this awning. This awning is a power awning. So it goes out, comes in, all right, but the light stays on. Looking at our control panel here, you can see we've got our interior light switch on, porch light, uh, awning light, awning extend and uh, retract, a couple USB chargers, and this light switch here controls the light up on the front cap. All right, so here we are. We finally made it to the inside. Sorry if you've been with me that whole time and it took a little bit long to get here. That's what the fast forward button's for. Um, anyway, you can see I'm five foot 10 and I've got quite a bit of room. So use that for your size comparison there. Uh, but we are on to one of my favorite features, which is this Murphy bed. 
I really like the Murphy bed because we do a lot of hanging out in the trailer. Uh, we camp in all types of weather, snow, rain, uh, windstorms, sandstorms, like you name it, we're out there. Uh, so it's nice to have a place to come in, play some cards, watch some TV, do something on those days to where we can't be out on the trails doing what we really want to do. So let's go ahead. I will show you how easy it is to put this bed down. So you can time me if you want. The pillows don't count. It actually takes me longer to get the pillows off the bed than it does to put the bed down. You ready? Done. So you can see how that lays down flat. And then all it takes to get this Murphy bed down is you pull this pin and it lays down. Again, move the pillows out of the way. There is a place for the pillows. There's a bunch of holes and things to stuff everything back there. All right, and then the mattress, pretty easy. It folds in half. I do have a four inch mattress topper on here. If you would like to know um, what the model number is, I will put that down in the comments. So, uh, or actually it will be in the description. But you can see we got our pillows and things. Um, it's really nice. Everybody complains about making the trailer bed, but there's nothing better than being done and be like, oh yeah, look, I laid this out flat and then the bed's made, right? done uh, oh, oh people's coming over right so you gotta make the bed really fast it's really simple so this is what it looks like behind the bed you can see there we've got nice storage um, for me I put my hat my glasses uh, a glass of water or whatever I can go right there it's on both sides you got this little light on both sides so it's very nice the only disappointment or the only bummer situation is that you don't get to enjoy this nice big window with your bed up so something to consider all right so back to the cabinets here you can see a nice big hanging storage there is a light lights up both cabinets sorry if it's a little shaky i do not have my stabilizer with me but you can see goes way down in there so you can turn a duffel bag up on end and uh, still have plenty of room to hang your clothes so you can see here we do have our USB ports right here um, we've got plugins on both sides now this other side is your um, ground fault interrupter reset switch this is where my inverter is to turn my inverter on or off whenever I am charging solar and I want to run my outlets off of my thousand watt inverter that is up underneath the storage. All right, these four screws here will get you access into your fresh water pump. Um, this is also where all your valves are for winterizing. I know this is an area to where that hasn't been covered either uh, at the dealership I went to, so um, that's something to look at if you get a chance. So there is lots of storage underneath the bed. It's not really easy to get to. You've got these little nets right here that you can pull things down to get to your, uh, we put our rags and towels, maybe some extra blankets and things. So um, that's something to consider, but it is quite a bit of storage. And the last bit of storage on this side of the trailer is this little cabinet here. So this is where we keep our electronics, uh, paperwork and other things like that. There is a lot of room right here. You can put a couple TV trays on each side. Um, I tried that, but my wife said no. So, looks like I gotta eat at the table. So, sorry I'm like that sweaty, creepy guy that said, let me show you the inside of my trailer, but uh, looking at the thermostat back here, it's 99 degrees, so it's pretty hot. Um, these are your overhead cabinets. Lots of storage here. Um, these did not come with the spring struts like some did, but I will be adding those, probably in a future video. Um, again, this is where we're keeping our food and all that. Tons of storage. Which is what we want. We got two kids. Um, we go on the road sometimes for four or five weeks. So um, let's take a look at this up here. So looking at this storage, this is where we're keeping our, cat, our, our uh, plates and dishes. Right cups. Seems like everywhere we go, we get a new uh, souvenir cup. That's one of my favorites. Look at that. Completed the Bindale Trail. All right. Uh, metal so this is the only metal part of this this and the underside so if you've got magnets you can either stick them to the underside or you can stick them to the side here this is plastic but it does however have a light and a vent fan so uh, some cool features this is a ginormous uh, round stainless steel 
uh, it's black stainless steel, I think, uh, sink. Got a nice movable faucet. Plenty of water pressure that comes out of it. Um, suburban two burner uh, stove. You have to light it still with an igniter. It does not have a built-in igniter, so some sort of ignition source. Got our sliding window, right? Slides here. That window pops out. And we've got a giant sliding window here. This dinette actually folds down. Um, ours does not fit in between the space. So I'm gonna have to do something there, but make sure that you check that whenever you pick up your trailer. That was like the one thing that we didn't check. Uh, so even though that doesn't fit, it does lay on there. It's just really uncomfortable, but there's still lots of storage underneath here. So you can see, you can fit a ton of stuff under there. So this side here is the same. It just, uh, starting right about here, you've got a fender well or some piping or something that goes right there. So you lose about one third of the storage area in this one. Got your convection oven here. You've got a nice little shot vac that takes attachments there. Uh, this pushes up and you can sweep it in. There's tons of YouTube videos on how that feature works. And don't think that you're gonna get a full cabinet there because that's where your water heater's at. It's on the back side. And what I've learned is anywhere that you have screws in a corner, that's an access panel. Um, but this does, however, have plenty of room for all of our pots and pans. It's just kind of a bummer that you got this nice big cabinet door and you don't get to use it all. So keep that in mind because there are no drawers anywhere um, in this kitchen area. So you gotta figure something out for your silverware. So you might hear that fan running in the back. That is that max air fan. Uh, it's moving a lot of air. It's still 99 degrees, but at least the air is moving. So let's go ahead, let's take a look here at this refrigerator. I've got it propped open because it's not turned on. Um, but this one is a Dometic. It runs on propane and it runs on shore power. That is it. It does, however, take 12 volts to run the circuit board that then ignites the propane uh, whenever you're off grid. So you have to have a charged battery to run it. Still, plenty of room, a uh, bag of ice, a uh, couple of bottles of your, your favorite uh, corn beverage, plenty of storage inside here. Uh, it's almost a full size fridge. It's like an apartment size fridge. All right, and then your little pantry area next to the refrigerator. You got tons of space here. Let's take a look at that. So you can see there, tons of room, tons of space, three levels. You see where I stored my silverware, right? Lots of space. There's your heater right there. I did remove, there's a safe lockbox thing that comes back here. I did remove that. Um, it's the same key that everybody has to a cubby, so it wasn't really that secure, and it was in the way. Say hi, YouTube. So you can see what that fan has already done. It's lowered at two degrees. Love it. Bunk beds for the kids. Plenty of room up here full size. They say it supports 500 pounds. Um, I don't know, however, some of them say 300, so that is something to consider. But sliding window, you can't see it. And then this is your emergency exit. This bed does flip up and you can store things from the outside. It also has storage underneath, which is where our girls' duffel bags and things will go. And last but not least, that's what everybody's been waiting for the bathroom you can see here that fan doing its job feels wonderful i've got enough room to walk in here see myself in the mirror All right got my medicine cabinet faucet sink not very big but this is where i put my toilet paper holder if you're looking for a place just be sure to reinforce it on the back side with a piece of wood All right Tons of storage in here. I will be doing some bungees to hold some additional things in right there. But you got your toilet, right? Pretty nice size toilet, pretty standard. The shower has a nice curved uh, shower curtain here, so that is a pretty good job. The shower miser. So I turn that fan off so that I can talk. Let me adjust this just a little bit all right so here i am standing up in the shower and again i'm five foot ten 
So I've got plenty of room right here where the skylight's at, but if I was standing over here and I was like, let's say six feet tall, um, I would hit my head there. So keep that in mind. Plenty of room to turn around and work with. Um, let me show you the cool things about this faucet. All right, got some light in here. Uh, so this is the faucet, just a basic generic faucet. Um, not really good. One of the first things that I will change out uh, to one of those like oxygenated shower heads that increase water pressure without really increasing water pressure. But this is the shower miser. Um, so this shower miser, you can turn this on and when you're dry camping, the water from your freshwater tank will just continue to circulate and fill up your freshwater tank. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, that's not really a good thing for uh, hookups and all that other stuff, which is true. If you have hookups, it's not really a good thing, but you could still have hookups, fill up your freshwater tank, turn the water off at the hookups, use your freshwater tank when you needed to, and it kind of does the same thing. But the main purpose is so that you don't send the water that you're not using from your freshwater tank into your gray water tank whenever you're boondocking um, or dry camping. And while it's going, this is normally a dark blue, but it's so hot in here, it starts to turn white, they say at about uh, 97 degrees. So it shows you how warm it is in here. That's supposed to be a nice dark blue. Huh. All right, let's take out, check out our control panels. If you have solar like I do, which it came from the factory this way, this is your solar uh, controller right here. So it tells me my batteries are fully charged. I'm uh, 13.2 volts. Uh, right now I'm charging at one amp, which is makes sense. There's no sunlight hitting my solar panel anymore. I've got my heated holding tank system. This is the cold weather package. I believe is pretty much standard on these. Um, turns on your fresh, gray, black. It just keeps your tanks from freezing and below freezing temperatures. Uh, this is where I turn my water pump on. This is where I turn my water heater on. Make sure that you actually have water in your water heater. Otherwise you will trip that breaker I told you about. All right, gray tank, black tank, fresh tank. Ooh, one third and battery is full. This is my light switch. No label. This is my light switch for the bathroom. Well, um, I really hoped you liked it. I hope I didn't forget anything along the way. If I did, put it in the comments. Uh, remember, I am not a trailering channel. I am, however, an outdoor and DIY channel. So a lot of the stuff is outdoors and DIY outdoor related. So um, those are things to consider. And therefore, here it is. Um, if you liked it, if it helped you out, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more of this, there will be a lot more updates to this trailer. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with that notification bell so that you stay up to date as soon as I post a video. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pack this up. I'm going to go get out of the heat because it's hot. Although the sun's going down, it feels pretty nice. Uh, again, I just want to thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned. I'll catch you on the next video.